شهیدا صدق الله مولانا العظیم الحمد لله it is clear and always clear to be here and to see happy faces as said the sheikh abdul qadir jilani رضي الله تعالى عنه says النظر الى وجوه المؤمنين يزيد الايمان to look at the faces of the believer do increase the iman and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam also said لن تدخل الجنه حتى تؤمن you will not enter to paradise until you believe and you won't be able to believe until you love and shall i not tell you something which will increase you in love amongst yourself and they said yes ya rasulullah why not he said afshu salam say assalamu alaikum to each other all the time when you meet so this best greeting best greeting and alhamdulillah it is also clear to know that you are continuing your uh liquor mahfil and alhamdulillah uh you have uh, a learned person a scholar imam uh, hafiz of the star of the star siraj may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you bless him bless this place and bless us with the barakat of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the mission of abu bin haji quran and our sheikh sidi shaykh islam I had a very really long day today and still not settled yet because of the long travel journey it took me 54 hours to reach to UK from Australia we started our journey on Sunday evening and we arrived here on Wednesday morning and then it was busy in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give high praise and all the fellows to our sister Uh, she passed away the mother of brother hasan and hussein may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make his grave the uh, jannah and the place of uh, peace and raha living a proper accommodation from jannah from paradise from jannah to firdaus So today I requested that I will just come and see you and uh, then inshallah just to have your ziyara and they take ijaza the next week inshallah we will have now a detailed uh, discussion and whatever you like but uh, if you allow me today as so I told that to okay, you I will come and meet and greet and see you and take ijaza from you is that okay so one thing no you kept quiet you can you can say to me for fun no inshallah next week we meet again yeah? you are meeting yeah. next week inshallah the next week will be 16 no 15th so still away from christmas not very close so inshallah we will have a lengthy uh, sitting inshallah and uh, one thing which uh, uh, a brother a you mentioned to me and i recited surah bakaras verse number 160 143 and part of it uh, which is that uh, teaches us the most difficult thing in the life is the balance and there is art actually that is art actually, to create balance to keep balance and to maintain balance just look at somebody is walking on the very thin wire and he has to keep the balance while he is walking on that wire uh, the 
whole body you want to keep the balance there and it is possible that somebody can walk on the thin wire as long as he learns and he knows that how to keep the balance like it's very very difficult to keep the physical balance i remember uh, the whole universe is sustained and maintained and kept on what value if if somebody asks you a question what is the value or what is the bond in simple words not in like very philosophical or scientific or very deep meanings of the things and deep realities of the thing not looking at that just very simple in simple phrase or simple words you want to speak about the bond the bond the value something which is keeping the universe maintained sustained going and that is only one another balance which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is a micro micro second delay or uh, fast moving fast or little tilt can abrupt or can ruin or can destroy the whole universe so sophisticated so nice so good balance that human beings and the whole reasoning of the human being uh won't be able to if it is put together to create such a thing won't be able to do that so someone wise hakim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has done it and it is done because by him and is kept because of him and this balance is the only value which need to be appreciated and that is related and connected with word rabb alhamdulillah rabbil alami rabb and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself as being rabb the maintainer of the balance and the keeper of the balance and the developer of that balance and having a very very strong and wherever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahman and rahim so he said alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar rahman ar rahim is rahma is there all the time is ghalib is dominant all the time but still he punishes our allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the difference between our allah means allah is the one the understanding of that god understanding our understanding and the christian understanding is that we cannot appreciate or understand why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry if it is allah is merciful is rahman and rahim why does he get angry so but for us it's not very difficult because he does not want that balance should be disturbed or oh, one person two people the community they come together and they try to disturb the balance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept that that's why he gets angry so this is the most important value need to be appreciated and to keep the balance is the most difficult it's a very easy you can take up shape or form or something and i tell you there are some people they preach religious values they talk about them and they try to find out that how can we attract people and they bring one thing outward appearance just outward appearance they try to change it a person comes he goes to pubs and clubs and all oh, lavish life and then certain one day he sits with somebody that is religious and then he grows beard then he wears long dress and jubba and he becomes a good imam ashri and people think subhanallah here is the change 
the world has changed now. The outlook, just outlook. <coughs> so some people do that and they appreciate and they recognize the change with that. But Rasulullah never did that. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, came to Arabs. Then I told you that example. A person walks from and travels from uh, Banu Sa'd. He comes to Medina. You know, long hairs? And those hairs had uh, that uh, thing. <coughs> what are they called? Uh, Braids. Braids. Braids, yeah. They, they, they had that. He had that. One this way, one this way. And he comes to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and, and he says, uh, Man ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is son of Abdul Muttalib? Ha ana. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, put his hand up. This is ha ana. I am here. I am. This is uh, ibn Abdul Muttalib. And he said, I, I say you on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that. Whatever I will ask you, you will tell me truth. And you will tell me exactly what it is. And speaking very, very harsh tone. And the Prophet ﷺ never asked him that you change the shape or the outlook and the form and just appearance. And Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Ali, all of the companions, 124,000 people sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abdul Aziz, the Baab radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, reflected, his qualities are reflected in his companions. And remember, your qualities are reflected in your companions. And he has, each companion has one quality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So 124,000. And then all of them, they had different qualities separated of the Prophet, peace be upon in them, and then made a community which was so balanced that never ever in the history of human being such a balanced people ever seen by the earth or witnessed by the heaven in the whole history of human being. It's not because that we are Muslim and we, we know about them. Gandhi said this. Gandhi said that to his people, he said, I cannot tell you about, about Krishna and I cannot tell you about, uh, uh, about the Hindu uh, heroes. If you want to rule, if you want to, if you want to benefit from the world and give the benefit to the world, the only examples I can give you is Abu Bakr and Umar. And everyone, everyone spoke about them. And wherever they went, they kept that balance. I mean, could you imagine that the person goes to Palestine? The doors are open, and then he goes into the, the, the church, and he does not pray there. And the person, the priest, the, 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 the man in charge asks him, requests him that you pray here. He says, no, if I pray inside, Muslims will destroy it, and we turn it into mosque. And say, Omar prayed here, Amir al muminin prayed here, so we will change it and convert it into mosque. No, I will not do that. And he just prayed outside of that church. It does not mean that he did not uh, believe that it is not allowed to be prayed there, but it's so balanced thought, so balanced, so accommodating, so accepting, and so easy and relaxed that everyone in the company of Rasulullah, in the company of Abu Bakr, in the company of Umar, in the company of Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair, everyone. And, and they were just natural, natural. It becomes a second nature that balance. 
So this is the most important thing and this is the most important value which we need to have in our lives. Why the Muslims of my suffering? There is no value. Our religious life and our worldly life, our spiritual life and our physical life, and our work and our worship, and our mosque and our shop, and our business and our uh, our uh, uh, relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very, very difficult to keep that balance. And nobody speaks about that. Everyone speaks about him or this one understanding or one point. And you know that hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, when at the Battle of Change, Ghazwa uh, Khandik, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was deceived by the Jews uh, uh, living in the suburbs of uh, Medina al Munawwara, Banu Qurayza. And, and still the academic world is always uh, feeling very shaky when they come to this point. Uh, Western, Western economic world, I mean universities, and they talk about the Sira of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and say, oh, Jews were killed and Muhammad, peace be upon him, licensed his companion and, uh, to kill them. And they don't look at the background. Medina was attacked by 10,000. The whole population was not 10,000. The local Medina people at the moment are only, you know how many? Just 40,000. Well, the total population of Medina to Manura is about 2.5, uh, 250,000, about quarter million. And in that, the regional people of Medina are just 40,000. Just imagine 1,400. And this 40,000 after 1,400 years. Could you imagine that at the time of Rasulullah how big it will be? The whole, you know, Medina to Manura, if you want to imagine that how big the city of Rasulullah was, Look at the Masjid Nabi Sharif, the Mosque of Rasulullah. Look at its area. The present Masjid of Rasulullah is covering the whole city of Rasulullah's time. So that is big city, that big, which can be just visited, walked around in half an hour from one end to another end. And one companion says that I used to leave my home as far Fajr Salat and it used to take about half an hour. Because the timing they did not have that but half an hour. And I used to reach to the masjid and Rasulullah used to be still in the first rakah of Fajr Salat reciting the Holy Quran. So this is, this in that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Asked the companion and told the companion that you come and we need to pray Asr prayer at the place of Banu Qurayza and we have to decide about that. And their leader, their imam, their chief, Sayyidina Saad bin Abada, decided that they need to be, their young men need to be killed. And that has very different back because that was three years. That was rebellion against the state and the writ of the state was not just challenged, they fought against the, against the state and they just stood up against the state and they just met with the enemies and they, 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 uh, they made plans with the enemies to come in and take over. And everyone accepts that what is the punishment of that because writ of the state, law, and in which the whole state is put at risk, whether modern or old, whatever it is, you give everyone accept that there is severe punishment for that. So, some companion had that message earlier, and they reached at that place. Some of them, they received the message late, now they were on the way, those they received the message late, they were on the way 
and Asar time was about to end. So they were divided into two groups. One group said Rasulullah means to be there as quickly as possible. It does not mean that you miss your Asar Salah. Miss on its time or from its time. But he means that be quick and be there as early as possible. And the other group said, we don't know that. We know only one thing Rasulullah said, we will pray Asar prayer there. If we reach at midnight, still we will pray Asar there. But that is our understanding. This, they said, this is our understanding, we are not going to pray. So one group prayed, the other group did not pray. They arrived to Rasulullah Sallallahu They said, Ya Rasulullah, this is the situation we faced. So who is right, who is wrong? Natural question. Because the question is always comes to the mind, oh, right and wrong. <laughs> right and wrong. And remember, when the question are right and wrong comes, there is deception. There is deception. There is some element of shaitan and playing, of evil playing there. Because if you bring the balance and keep the balance, it's not necessary that that's right and wrong. That's why in our Hanafi faith, you will find, you will find three opinions. Three opinions. One of them is contradictory to the other. And one will be said Sahi, and the other will be said Asa. Correct and most correct, or more correct. Right and more right. This will be said. <laughs> and this is not accepted. And this is, but some people, they have only one criterion, right and wrong. There is nothing else. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, who is right, who is wrong? Prophet peace be upon him said, both of you are right. Because you interpreted the words and the statement of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, according to your best abilities and capacity. And that is fine. If you understood it and you exerted whatever skills you have and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you reasoning, you put that into action. And you try to understand the meaning of that what has been told to you. As long as there is sincerity and as long as there is not actually to counter each other, fight with each other, the whole point is that how much sincere you are and how much balanced you are and how much accommodating and compromising you are with each other so that this world goes Remember, nothing happens, or not all of the things, if nothing, but not all of the things happens as you wish. But if your wishes and your desires are good, they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you need to maintain them and keep them. If they come true, well and good. If they don't come true, don't worry. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide things. And then you put your effort and try to understand what it means. Because it takes effort, it takes sacrifice. It takes time, it takes everything. That's why the human being tend to avoid it. And they become imbalanced. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا we have made you Ummat Wasat. A group of people, they always maintain balance. They preach balance, they talk balance, they live balance. Their whole objective is balance. And the whole objective is Wasat. wasat. A radical middle way. A radical, very, very, to be radical on to be balanced and and the exact in the uh, midway. So that is what what is required and needed. And uh, there are many, many. You see, see, America is one extreme. This uh, this Donald Trump 
particularly. Uh, this man is just, we don't know. That is something, subhanAllah, the human beings. And remember, the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, He cannot see that you try to play and try to outbalance what He has created and put there. Then he will, he will put some, someone who will go on the extremes. And then uh, through that, some, some punishment by, through the people, there will be uh, the plan, plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember if somebody speaks, even though he speaks, very good things. But if you think that there is extremism and there is an element of extreme uh, thoughts or demonstration of extremism in any way, remember, is not accepted. It's against the Rahmatul the principle of Rahmatul and against the principle of Rabbul Alami, and against to be Ummati Wasat. Nobody will recognize that. It will be very short living. It will come and it will burst up and then it will uh, vanish. It will go away. And so somebody comes on the name of Rasulullah, love of Rasulullah, but they practice extreme views. And what is the sign of extreme views actually? Remember, extreme view is when you try to prove the, uh, everyone else and the one who does not agree with you is wrong. It's me now who's talking extreme. If I start talking and I teach you and you teach your, uh, yourself and the others who are around you, uh, this is the final truth. And not an inch this way or that way, <laughs> is acceptable. So, this is extreme. Somebody speaks about this, that whatever I have taught and whatever I have said, that is the final truth. And that is something final. Yeah, you have proof. You have, you will, you will make it strong and you will make your case by bringing many examples from the history. And everyone has that word. You can support your view with many examples, but to say, this is the final, no. No, nothing acceptable, contrary to this or against this or uh, inch this way or inch that way is not acceptable. That is something extreme. So what happens? This is very extreme view that, okay, Jerusalem, or Bayt al-Maqdis, is the capital of Israel. And the Americans announced that it's extreme. Extreme this. This, this is not acceptable. Not at all. At the same time, it is also not acceptable that these Jews don't have right to live and they need to be killed. They need to be just wiped out from the face of earth. Mm. That is not also acceptable. The way forward is that we have to keep the balance and bring the balance. And in Pakistan, we have so many so many, in the Muslim world, it's not just Pakistan, but in Pakistan the demonstration uh, is demonstrated more. So, for example, this Khasm uh, al-Nabuwa, the, 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 the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a final prophet. And some people had that, uh, some demonstrations, some sittings, some their things, and the, those are right people. We. Aqidah is right, love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no problem at all. 
companions did that, those examples are here, fine. But the problem starts when you say, this is the final truth. If somebody does not accept it, he needs to be just finished off or wiped off or need to be just sent off somewhere. So he has no place. That is not accepted. Now about the Qadianis, they always remember, there are two things I would like to say to you. If you come to, to, to come across with any Qadiani or Ahl, Qadiani, the, 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 there are three different types of people, those people. Some of them are Qadiani, some of them are called Ahmadi, some of them are called Lahori. So, Qadianis are those, they, they believe that Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, the person who was from Punjab, from Qadian, and he claimed to be Prophet Astaghfirullah, he was messenger of Allah, Astaghfirullah. This is Qadianis, they believe. And those, the, the Ahmadi, they don't believe that he was Prophet, rather they say he was a good man, he was a scholar, and he served Islam very good. He gave service to Islam. And that is also not acceptable. And Lahoris, they say, he was not a scholar, he was not nothing, he was just a Muslim. And no prophet, no nothing, no scholar, but just a Muslim. So that is where all these three are are uh, Three groups are not acceptable because that is contrary to the basic and fundamental understanding, the collective understanding of Muslim Ummah, not mine and not yours. The collective understanding of the Muslim Ummah, of Khatamun Nabiyyin, word Khatamun Nabiyyin, is that the Prophet, peace be upon his last Prophet of Allah, and there is no Prophet after him. That is collective understanding. And remember, when there is collective understanding, that is right, that is final truth. You can say that. But don't say that because you understood it, so that is the final one. But as long as it is proven that the whole Ummah is agreed upon something, and the collective understanding of any verse of the Holy Quran, any hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, any interpretation of the word of the Holy Quran which are collectively accepted and collectively accepted of the hadith of Rasulullah's understanding, that is no problem to say that this is final truth and I will stick to it. There is no problem on that. So the collective understanding of the whole Ummah on the point of the Prophet peace be upon him is that he is the final prophet. Now, somebody does not believe in that. Somebody says, no, I don't agree with it. Now, what will we do? Will we kill him? Yeah, tell me. <laughs> what will we do? So what is choice? The answer is that, okay, that is your problem. If you don't believe that, that is your problem. Don't have it. We don't, we will, we will give you some proofs, we will argue with you, we will debate with you, we will have a conversation with you, but if you don't understand, we can have your opinion. But now, with them, with the Qadianis, Ahmadi, Lahoris, the issue is what? Some, this is problem. Now we think, and some people think, okay, because they don't believe that the Prophet peace be is the last prophet, is the last prophet, so they are non-Muslim and they have no place in Pakistan or anywhere in the world. But that is a wrong understanding. If we don't have that, that is, don't be mixed with that. There are Kafir people as well. There are some other people as well. But they have their right. They don't believe in Allah. 
They don't believe in our prophets. <laughs> there are people they don't believe in the prophet, peace be upon him, and there are people they don't believe. They, they believe in the prophet, but they don't believe that he's final prophet. Now, if I ask you a question academically, you know, don't think about emotionally. Yeah? Don't think that about, oh, what will happen this. If I say, who is bad? The one who does not believe in Rasulullah at all, or the one who believes in the Prophet but does not believe as final Prophet. Be fair and be reasonable. Who is more? So who is more bad? Who is it? Yeah. But here is here is somebody who says that. The one who does not believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we have no problem. But the one, the Prophet, he says that he is not. He is sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not the last Prophet, or he does not believe in the finality of the Prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is proper bad. He is worse than pigs and this and that and so and so. <coughs> you know. Now, what? The balance is going out. There's a whole thing is going thrown into the window. Our problem with Qadianis are not that they are not they are not believer in the finality of Prophet Our problem is they are severe, more dangerous, not in the sense that they don't believe in the final Prophet they are dangerous because they put, they make the masjid like us. And they don't agree with the collective understanding and interpretation of that which is given and accepted from the time of Rasulullah till today. So we say to them, okay, you keep whatever you have, but declare yourself a separate group. We have no problem. But you don't declare yourself. You say, we are Muslim. And you don't agree that what is accepted by the whole Muslim Ummah. That is a problem. <coughs> Not this problem that they don't believe as the Prophet peace be upon them. That is just on the member, you know, the people when they speak to the public, to the layman. That is, that is nothing to do with the, uh, with the actual teaching and actual meaning of Khatam al-Nabiyyi. So just imagine that somebody says that, uh, okay, I am one of you, but does not agree with, the, with that, uh, what you have accepted value and norms. So you will say, okay, you take your identity and make your identity separate than my identity. And we have no problem with that. Their problem is that they want to keep, uh, I mean, just imagine that somebody put uh, on wine or alcohol the label of milk. And he insists that this is milk. And he makes that wine or that alcohol look like milk. And he says, okay, this is milk. That is not acceptable. And reason does not accept that. This is the problem with them. So, one thing, you, when, you, when you talk about somebody speaks about the Qadiyani, Qadiyani come to you and speaks to you, try to speak to you, they will always try to speak to you on the point of Isa Islam. Isa Islam's second coming, that he is alive in the heaven and he will come back. Now, he will ask you this thing, he will say, okay, do you believe that Isa Islam will come back? And you say yes. He will say, okay, Isa is prophet of Allah or not? <coughs> yes, he is prophet of Allah. 
So then, if he is messenger of Allah and he comes back and still Rasulullah remains of Khadam al Nabi, still Rasulullah is the last prophet. So no problem happens. So why? Why? Why not Ula Muhammad? Why not? They will not say that Ula Muhammad. They will say, they will bring you on this point and you will start thinking. So when somebody, someone comes to you and she says, okay, Rasulullah is his final prophet, but Isa is the messenger of Allah, he will come back and Rasulullah will remain the messenger of Allah, last messenger of Allah, Jalla Jalaluhu, and his finality is not broken or challenged or affected uh, as being the prophet. So what will you say? And he will say, don't discuss that. Say, this is not the question. Isa Islam's arrival or coming is no discussion with the Italian. And the second point which I have elaborated to you, explained to you before, and that is that whatever you believe is separate than the identity of the Muslim, so you are not allowed to keep the identity of the Islam or Muslim. <coughs> you need to make your separate identity. If that is separate identity than the Muslims and you declare yourself that you are not a Muslim, you have no problem at all. You can call yourself whatever you want to call. But that is separate than Islam and Muslims. Muslims have their own identity, their own values, their own understanding, accepted, consensus, uh, something agreed upon uh, understandings. And you need to find out those agreed upon points Stick to them and then try to work hard for keeping the balance in your life. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Nuh alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam and all the prophets on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, Hal ballakhta? I've seen that Nuh alayhi salam will be called, Hal ballakhta? Did you deliver the message, my message to the people? He will say, yes, Ya Allah, I did it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, come the people of Nuh alayhi salam, they will be brought forward. And Allah asked them, did any, so when came and delivered my message to you, they said, no, nobody came to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Nuh alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam and all of the prophets, so who is your witness? Bring the witness that you delivered the message. And he will say, Muhammadun wa ummatu Muhammad. Muhammad and ummah of Muhammad is my witness. And they will confirm that I have delivered the message. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call the ummah of Rasulullah and call us and they will ask, Do you know that the Nuh alayhi salam has delivered the message? And they will say, Yes, Ya Allah. We are witness that he has delivered the message to his people. Oh. And if you want to this status, you want to achieve this status, and you want to become uh, the person of exclusion, and you don't want to include anyone other than yourself, and you don't want to have the inclusion policy, you won't be able to succeed. For that, oh. For that, you need to have very inclusive approach. Inclusive. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa says, if somebody says something and it has 100 meanings and 99 of them are negative and wrong and una unacceptable, one of them is acceptable, his talk, his meaning, his word will be taken only for that meaningful and positive meanings. And every other meaning will be removed. And with this so much positive and inclusive policy and inclusive approach and having that in our life and in our history and still missing it is, is not understandable. And not acceptable at all. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make
make us balanced people. And those they are on the middle path, those they are on the balanced path, those they are always thinking about the inclusion, not the exclusion. 